In this video, we're going to be fixing that dented guard at the front of my car, but I'll show you the guard that I've got and then I'll show you what the plan with is. So as you guys might have seen when I was on my recent trip with Tyler, I had an incident where I had to pull my car out of the way and I flicked up a log and dented my freshly chopped GQ. If you haven't seen it yet, get over to Tyler's channel and check it out. So here's the guard here. We'll start by talking about what's wrong with it. Rust patch here and this rust patch down here. That's actually gonna work out quite well because I've done some measurements and if my measurements are correct, then my cut is actually gonna come out and skirt just past here and then down to about there. That should get cut out and that should get cut out because I also do a cut sort of out there. This bit down here, I don't exactly know what I'm gonna do yet, but I have another guard and I also have the original guard that I could probably steal some stuff this guard here it's good but it's not as good as the other one there's a dent here there is a snorkel hole there's a bit of a dent here part of the bottom of this is fine so i could probably cut through here and splice that into that one but yeah this is the best by far i'll show you what the really cool things about it are one is it doesn't have an antenna hole this would have come off one of the cars that had the antenna up the a pillar and the other cool thing is it doesn't have a snorkel hole a good reason to go to a bonnet entry snorkel, which is something that I've always wanted. One, just for the looks. Two, to save this virgin guard, even though it's rusty. And three, because my airbox runs a pod filter. That snorkel has done me well for a long time. That airbox has done me well for a long time, but I've got a $15,000 crate motor in there and pod filters do not keep dust and sand out. First things first, take some measurements and transfer those measurements over to this guard so I know where to cut. I have cut the guard. I'll show you how. So I grabbed a piece of cardboard. I sat it in a certain spot with this edge here going straight through this hole and used that as a datum sort of thing. Ran that to a certain measurement from the back of the guard to here and got my shape. And then because I've got those same two points on this guard, held it up to this one, traced it, cut around here in the same spot and did the same thing for the front. And so now I've just got to weld in the strip at the front, the strip at the back. When I was chopping my car, I didn't actually get that whole process on camera, so I'll get it this time. But it's just about putting a sheet of steel in there and then welding corner to corner and then sanding it nice and smooth. I'm a little bit disappointed because as I was sanding this with the orbital sander, I found there's some bog in it, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense because when I picked up the guard, I checked the back. If there's a dent in it that's been bogged up, you'll see it from the back. It looks like they've used the bog to fix pitting, but yeah. Really weird. I might have to use like a high build primer. But yeah, I'll keep sanding and I'll get some of that zinc sheet that I use for the rear wall. I'll flog that back from Drew's house and get just two little strips of it to weld those in. And it'll matter more as I get towards priming it and stuff as to what's going on underneath there. I've got to replace the bottom there. I'm just gonna flog that bit off another guard, which I've got sitting over there because this is, this is all rusty. Just other little bits like in here, I'll just treat all that. Yeah, I just have to be careful when I'm getting to the stage of priming it. I've just cut out a strip for the back, a strip for the front, and we can start making it fit. So yeah, one's gonna go from here and weld into here, and one's gonna go in here and weld into here. Once I get to the exciting bit, I'll set up the camera, but just for now, I'm just sort of, you know, cutting and shaping and stuff, but I will show you the bulk of how to do this. Then it's just a matter of getting that to sort of 
sort of work your way around there. Pretty damn close. And because it's not bolted to the car, it sort of fit as, as good as I can get it. Like I could tap that there and then just start making it fit on the way around. But because it's not bolted to the car, I don't want to try and move it into place too much. Like you could go to bolt it on the car. You know, this could be way too far out because like these have a fair bit of move in it. I should probably do it on the car, but all I've done is I've just tried to get it sitting as freely as it wants to. So we got it all shaped up and tacked in there. One really important thing when you're doing something like this is it's not about getting like these two butted up perfectly against each other. In fact, that bit there where the gap is and this bit here where that gap is, they're probably the best part because you because I'm going to be grinding like sanding this back flat. You want it to be corner to corner so that you're filling this up with weld and then you've got enough material there to sand back to a corner. I'll show you what I mean. You can imagine zoomed all the way in. This is the edge of one piece of sheet metal and this is the edge of another piece of sheet metal. You want it to be corner to corner like that because then we're going to be doing a weld in here and then I'm going to sand this flat and so you end up with you know, still a lot of world. If you butt one up to the corner like that and then have it like that, I'm not going to be able to get any weld in there. And the weld that I do get in there, I'm going to be sanding straight through here. And you know, you're going to be losing half your weld and it's going to crack. So you want corner to corner, fill it up with weld, sand it flat. It's kind of hard to explain, but yeah, I'm going to keep on tacking this up now. So yeah, we've jumped forward a bit in time now. I was in a bit of a rush to get that guard and snorkel and everything on because at the time I was halfway through engineering all the new superior stuff. He wasn't totally happy that I'd taken the strength out of that bonnet. And so I packed that in with steel, welded it off, painted it. So I'll show you some clips of all that. A couple of people asked how we went with matching up the paint. The paint didn't match up too badly. You know, with a bit of age and pinstriping, I reckon it'll match up just fine. During the whole transformation of this front end, the other thing I wanted to do was add hoops because when I did the Jeep track with Tyler, I actually ended up with a lot of clay wedged in here. And so I hated the fact that I didn't have that corner protection anymore when I cut those last hoops off. The reason I cut those last hoops off were because they impeded the indicator and my engineer basically asked me to cut them off and 
when your engineer asks you to do something, you do it. This time, I drew him a design before I went and welded him on and made sure he was gonna be happy with it, and he was. So this is the hoops we've gone with now, and I've already taken them on a West Coast trip, and they're already scratched and scarred, so I know they work. Yeah, I'm in your town, I'm coming your way, just wait up. Me and my team, we taking no L's, I told them you don't want to play us. We go in that town with a flat in the morning, so fuck it, I'm just gonna stay up. Remember last year, I told them to play us, and now they all wanna play up. They hit me now, they coming too late, all our replies is save up. Me and my guys, we did it ourselves, so no one can say that they made us. They gave me the shit, they trying to call me, I told them you gotta go straight up. We eating for days, I've been in the gym, I swear that I'm getting my weight up, yeah. And so yeah, that's pretty much got you all caught up. Fully engineered for all of the stuff we did with Superior, new hoops. They're happy with them this time. And I'll show you how the, the bonnet notch turned out. So you can see I've capped that all back in. I couldn't be bothered trying to match the paint the same as the rest of the bonnet, so just did a strip of black. From a distance, it just looks like a bit of pinch well. But I never know who to set it. Go to the bank with you the cash, and I told all my brothers to bet it. All on myself, Hey, I told them we get in the bag. Remember the days when we was in school, they would just sit back and laugh. Yeah. I'm on the track and I feel every step and I'm turning it up to the max. Yeah. Oh, I seen it all, you overt. Hop up in a whip, watch your skirt. I might risk it all for you first. Meet me in the night, shit get worse. What we're doing today is we are getting rid of the silver top alternator and going to a black top alternator because the silver top alternators only go up to 100 amp. With the new 24 volt system, uh, the DC to DC robs a fair bit of charge from the car. That means we're gonna lose this vacuum pump. We're going to be going to a vacuum pump on the timing cover. Those of you who have been following me a while know that this is a factory turbo motor. And so it does have the spot for a vacuum pump down on the timing cover. I've just had a blank there pretty much until now. The reason being, before the cape, I had two silver top alternators and so I wanted to, you know, be able to take advantage of using those. After this West Coast trip, this one's a bit tired. Yeah, it's time to replace and so I decided it's time to go up to a black top alternator. So let's do it. <laughs> So with silver top alternators, obviously you've got the oil feed, the oil drain. So these here are just two little grub screws that I got from the local air shop. That's just what I'm gonna to use to bung it up. So all that's out. Now we're ready to put this new alternator in. So that's the new alternator in. Phase two is going to be putting the vacuum pump on. It's gonna be hard to film because it's in a crappy spot. So because I'm going to vacuum on that side, I don't need this thing anymore. That was the old vacuum line that used to go from like the vacuum pump here and over to the vacuum canister over there. Alrighty, so the vacuum pump turned up. There it is there. And I managed to score one of these factory oil feed lines off the same fella that I bought the new guard off, actually. He gave it to me, which was really kind of him. There is a oil pressure port up there for it. 
Again, it's going to be really hard to film, so I'll just pop it in and, and pick you guys up after. Alrighty, so the new vacuum pump's in, got the factory hard line that goes up under the pump there, gets retained at that point there, and then comes back, and there's a banjo bolt that goes into that oil port there. So the only thing left to do now is the vacuum line, which is right there. That's gonna go to my brakes and clutch. So that vacuum system has been like chopped and changed so many different times from having to rearrange different things. I've noticed sometimes my brakes might lose vacuum or if I'm descending a hill, maybe my clutch loses vacuum. And so I've resorted back to exactly what was in the factory manual. It comes from the vacuum pump, then it tees, then a check valve to the clutch. And then on the other side of the T, there's a check valve canister brake booster. So that's exactly what I've done here. But yeah, let's check it out. That's all done. I've just brought it for a bit of a drive. We haven't dropped below 14.2 the entire time. And that's been through two stages of charge with the DC to DC as well. So that even stayed at 14.2. When the DC to DC was charging at 29 volts, that's gone down to float stage now. So yeah, very happy. I went to the black top alternator. We're gonna head home now and call it a night. Probably start editing this video.